the traditional uh, built environment world is divided in discipline design. So I design landscape, architecture, mm. uh, bridges, engineer. One create, maybe can create innovation. Of course, there is always innovation in that, but uh, our approach is to try to do it in a different way. And we talk about experience design, where I design the experience of working. So, and if I'm rethinking about how I work, then I might need to rethink about um, the space, but also the product and the digital technology that comes with it. So uh, I need to put more expertise together to design that experience. And that's where you need a multidisciplinary team to work with. So mm -hmm. it's not space design, it's not digital design, it's not product design, it is experience design. Yeah. And that's why UNS experience is kind of working at the cross link of these activities. Hi guys and welcome to a new episode of the IBD Hub podcast. I'm Julia De Mauro, your host. I can't believe it's the 10th episode today, um, which is uh, pretty amazing. And today we have a very special guest. His name is Filippo Lodi and he is the head of the innovation and knowledge management at UN Studio. And they have been working on a new uh, project called UNSX, X like experience. Um, and he's going to tell us all about it. Uh, it's a new uh, department within the company. Um, so it's the first time that they talk about it on a podcast. Uh, so I'm very happy and pleased to have him on board for this episode. Now, I just wanted to make a quick uh, introduction to update you on what has been happening uh, for the IBD Hub uh, on the side. Um, so we are going to release very soon the pre-sales for our new course on how to build your own architectural practice in collaboration with uh, the essential workshops in Amsterdam. Uh, so stay tuned uh, to get uh, to buy the course um, is going to be released very soon, but the pre-orders will be available before the course goes online um, and the price is quite affordable. So uh, if you're really uh, thinking about starting your own company as an architecture practice, um, I'm sure you will get uh, the best tips on there and uh, a really a strong structure on how to start. So stay tuned for that. We also have now a brand new Instagram account that uh, will basically cover everything that we do for the IBD Hub, uh, the podcast and the IBD company. Uh, but we decided to keep only one uh, Instagram account. The account is the underscore IBD underscore hub. Um, and on this page, you will have all kind of video tutorials, uh, podcast episodes, um, and also inspirational uh, videos. So uh, if you haven't followed this page, please follow us because um, it's very important to us to have you on board and uh, also if you haven't subscribed yet to uh, the podcast uh, whether you're on YouTube, uh, Spotify or Apple podcast please subscribe so you will be aware every time we release uh, an episode and uh, next week's uh, episode is also going to be super interesting we're going to cover AI um, and I think it will be a very uh, exciting episode as well. Um, so yeah, and for the rest, I just wanted to remind you as usual um, that the IBD Hub uh, is a business development consultation and mentoring uh, program. Uh, for companies or for individuals that want to uh, expand their business and grow their business. Uh, we usually help people 
and companies to draw out their business development strategy and to teach them how to achieve to get new clients and more projects, uh, whether it's online or offline. Uh, so don't hesitate to go on her website, the ibdhop.com, uh, to get to know more. And uh, yes, now to our episode uh, with Filippo Lodi. So hi, Filippo. Uh, thank you for Hello. being with me today um, for a new episode of the podcast. Uh, Filippo, you're the head of innovation and knowledge uh, management at UN Studio. You have more than 15 years of experience in design, technology and innovation. And I think that today you're going to uh, basically tell us a little bit more about what you've been up to uh, at UN uh, Studio and uh, maybe introduce us to your new uh, big project. Well, thank you for inviting me um, to have a chat with you. Um, the, so what I've been busy in the last uh month uh through let's say lockdown and and uh well starting a little bit before uh yeah. is with um a, a couple of colleagues we've been setting up a new uh team mm -hmm. um uh, we call it uns x uns experience um and um uh, uns x is an innovation uh think tank and an experience lab so we kind of span across uh, the field of design uh, where we in fact collaborate with um, uh, companies or internally to do new um, type of um, products uh, to design new services uh, to bring innovation to new projects to collaborate with specialists uh, to really to really kind of focus on um, yeah, on what is innovation and um, what is um, what can help us to to kind of really create impact uh, in the society by proposing um, ideas, concept, products uh, that uh, were not there before, and therefore trying to yeah make a blast and um, um, bring bring some change, positive change. So what triggered you into thinking about this? Because I guess you found like a flaw uh, within the system or like something that was missing in the market. Um, and you probably had to do a business plan in order to, to make this happen. Yeah, definitely. So I think, uh, um, so from in the last years, I've been um, through uh, in many ways involved with the, with the startup world. And uh, um, uh, let's say working a lot with startups, you you learn that you have to, um, yeah, better fail fast and change to pivot, as they they say. So the kind of pivoting part has been the kind of journey that has brought us to to do the things that we do today. In fact, uh, UNS experience is the merging of what we had before. Mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, a product team and what we called the UNS knowledge team, which was before the knowledge platform, which was before the community knowledge community. So we had like iterations uh, of development uh, of um, a unit by changing what the unit does, what the proposition, what the reaction was uh, to the market, what is the reaction of um, yeah, the team that we collaborate with and evolving that experience, uh, we come to what we do today. And um, we find that, uh, yeah, we find that, uh, yeah, that, that's where that, that was, so it was an evolution. Uh, yeah. It was not, there was nobody that came with that idea overnight. No, of so, course, yeah. I can <laughs> that's imagine. For it's, sure. it's usually a process and especially at UN Studio, you always, try to come up with new ways to look at things. So uh, it's definitely interesting. But what would be the perfect client or the perfect project uh, for UN, uh, UNSX? 
I think the the perfect um, the perfect type of uh, project is where we can uh, really create a true impact. Um, let's say if we um, somehow develop a new concept for um, the circular economy that that really creates and that really changes, creates a shift in the way that we rethink circularity or a new form of materials or the way that we um, experience working in an entirely different way because we reframe the concept of an office uh, or we combine technology in a way but it, we, where we really truly impact the quality of the environment or the quality of work in a measurable way that would be our ideal type of uh, project um, mm -hmm. and so uh, we are, I think, really driven by 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 that possibility to create positive impact. And I can mention an example of a, a project that we did um, that is maybe going that direction, mm -hmm. and uh, which is the coolest white. Mm -hmm. uh, something that we've done uh, uh, over um, last last year. In fact, we launched it uh, last year. Uh, so it, it was in, in, in the baking for uh, for a few years before. Uh, it's a product we have developed with a Swiss uh, manufacturing company called Monopole. Mm -hmm. um, and it is basically, it's a new paint. It's a coating. Uh, so it's a very thin, uh, it's a very thin layer. Yeah. Uh, it's an industrial product. So it can be replicated at industrial scale. So it's, mm -hmm. there's no premium to it. And it has two qualities. It is the whitest white that you can buy on the market <laughs> as a coating. Uh, so there's nothing whiter than that. And that was big research to do this, uh, mm -hmm. but it has a, a technical component, um, which is also uh, as um, the highest coefficient uh, mm -hmm. for which it reflects, uh, it refracts the heat. So whenever okay. the sun hits the material, it does not let the sun penetrate it. So you need, less energy to cool down a building um you need uh, um yeah you have cooler buildings and if we would scale this product at an urban scale so we don't think one building but we think a city or um, and we can mention a lot of buildings that are white on the world mm -hmm. if every building would have that white we would reduce uh, carbon emissions we would use uh so it would have an environmental impact sure. to a global scale um, that's the potential of that uh, project, and um, that's what I find so cool. And it, it has, it was designed to be a very democratic product, so mm. anybody can buy it, anybody can use it, um, uh, anybody can apply to to a building. Um, it's just there, so yeah. it's and then a pro yeah. Sorry, and then this is a product that then you can also use uh, for your project at UN Studio. Is yeah, yeah. So we're we're using that in in a, in a few projects which are under constructions. Uh, so we um, it's we cannot yet take pictures of it, okay. uh, but it will be up and running hopefully as soon as possible. Um, and we also hear uh, that some other uh, companies are specifying that uh, uh, mm -hmm. that product. So it, it was really like a commercial product uh, yeah. and industrial. So um, it can have it can be applied to cars. Uh, so cars need to use less electricity for for the for cooling down. It yeah. it's not only for buildings. It's just a coat. It's just yeah. a coating. Uh, so it it is a generic product for the building the built environment. Yeah, um, and, and that, these are products that we really like. Um, yeah, and, it's uh, it's incredible that you can come up with such a a solution that makes such a huge impact in terms of sustainability. Exactly, I think that's also the how we evaluate the fact that if things can have impact, mm -hmm. they should really have a really big impact, and they should yeah. really resonate with the question that the society is uh, looking for answers now. So um, that's where the functionality plays a strong role because it answers to a real need, but it also answers to a problem that is bigger than the individual or than a simple, than an individual building. It's a, 
So we are very much interested in kind of like uh, components, building components, elements of buildings, parts, um, because if, if we think about it, all buildings are made out of parts. There's no yeah. building that is like one jelly yeah. uh, uh, cake. Uh, they don't come out of the oven. Uh, so yeah. we need to have parts. And where do you get those parts? What do you do with it? What, are, uh, what do you do after it? How, yeah. how are they designed so that you can remove parts, disassemble them, or how, how is it? That, these are very things that are fascinating us at the moment at the big scale, mm -hmm. but the same can be applied to a, a product. So a, um, um, a chair or a, um, a toy uh, for children uh, is the same material questions or the same origins of where th everything is kind of connected in that sense. Yeah. No, it's, it's really nice because I think like you managed to bring the same solutions that architects usually uh, give at the building scale, but like in a in an even deeper and detailed scale, if I can if I can say that uh, in that yeah, way. Yeah, it, it is the, I think what we uh, know is that we can design uh, or we can apply our creativity to mm -hmm. the scale of the space but then the same type of methodology you can apply to different scale up yeah. until the digital side so in that sense we are looking for um we are designing other type of things that maybe are only available digitally are only digitally but they are still creating the same type of impact yeah. so yeah. it's not the scale or the size of the medium but it is why does it why does it contribute in a positive way to to sure. the built environment? That's the that's, that's the different the approach. That's the approach. Yeah, that's yeah, the approach, yeah. Yeah. and that's where it becomes X or experience uh, as to experience the world like this. It, it is really where where we can also X is maybe a little bit experiment or uh, yeah. Well, it, it, as it, it started as a, a little bit of a startup at first, so it, it's. Indeed. I think it's a, it's a nice uh, it's a nice way to put it. Um, I was wondering, what kind of team do you have? Is it uh, art based on architects? Yeah, this is a good question. I like. Yeah, it, it's a, our team is um, um, a team of multidisciplinary talents. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Um, we have um, therefore a mixed a group with a mixed uh, background. Uh, so um, there are designers, there are product designers, there are um, engineer, computational specialists, sustainability specialists, there are strategists, creative strategists, uh, um, there are uh, more innovation manager, more marketing oriented uh, uh, people. Um, so it's a group which has different expertise and all of them have slightly different background. Um, mm -hmm. And none of them has the same, uh, really, there's nobody that has the same, um, uh, that has made the same path to arrive mm -hmm. to the team. Uh, and so that makes everybody unique. Um, they all actually come from different countries. So they have different countries studying in different countries speak different languages, study different things, uh, and they come to kind of bring in their perspective or their idea. And that's what makes it very uh, complementary to the majority of other teams or clients that we work with, um, because they don't cover the same expertise. And we, every time, form a team that complements whatever the client um, does not have. Uh, so that way we always create a, yeah, a, a set of perspective to solve one problem or mm. to come up with new new solutions or new ideas. It's very, it's, and I think it is very, it has been also quite, it is quite a challenge to um, work in a multidisciplinary team. Yeah. Also because of that, because everybody has a different understanding of how to solve things. So um, everybody starts from different from different starting point. It's very mm -hmm. fascinating to see. Uh, so for us is we had to redevelop a methodology on how we work. And that mm -hmm. has been also um, innovation in a way, um, process innovation, or how do we approach 
projects we need a different um, outline than than the architects mm -hmm. have in the rest of the studio or than the product designers they have or the digital designers because we need to combine multiple things and, yeah. and, and that, this is also very fun did you also see a big difference between the architecture world let's say and 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 like this startup environment do you think that there is a, a bit of a a gap in between that well i i think um within the studio we have been for the years let's say before the unsx uh, involved a lot in, in startups, especially through maybe UN Sense that has also been a, a startup. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of uh, learned a lot from uh, from the way of how startups think and mm -hmm. how they are able to change, pivot or reiterate what what they do or how they do it. Um, but the world of startups is also requires a different um yeah a different type of management than yeah. uh, than architecture or requires different type of uh yeah, goals objectives way of evaluating uh yeah. it survives at a different speed so it's not about cash flow but it's about burning rate uh, so yeah. how uh so it, it it lives in a different um uh, in a different uh, domain and uh, it also is requires to to really keep an eye open on how you do things because tomorrow it might you might have to completely change and uh, so it requires also an attitude for the people working in it that is okay with a degree of change mm -hmm. sometimes architecture you can do a project for a number of years yeah. uh, and that is the same project so we we have colleagues that have been doing a project for like three four five six seven years that's the same yeah. project yeah. Uh, in the world of startups you don't know what's happening tomorrow so or well maybe yeah, it, you don't know it, it, is that one of the biggest challenges uh for you as the leader of of a team like that is is being able to improvise and like to to find solutions well, I think that for um, yeah, those of us kind of uh, responsible for the kind of development of the team are, um, uh, I think the, there are, let's say, different challenges. Uh, uh, definitely one of the h hardest things is to um, re keep on reinventing yourself mm -hmm. in um, um, especially because we belong as industry to the architecture, which is um, has been very strong in reinventing it, its product, but not the industry. Mm. We still do in architecture competitions or mm. other form of work that you that in a lot of other industries are thought to be you guys are crazy. You're doing competitions in architecture. Mm. What is that? Um, so. Uh, in in that essence is yeah that's a, that's maybe a big challenge yeah i think a lot we talk about also uh, experience design uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, kind of a, a kind of a new vocabulary um, um, as this kind of allows us to kind of work in a um, yeah also i think interesting is that by us creating this kind of new um, business uh, that we are asked to kind of reinvent a little bit the profession. So mm. it would be very interesting in the long run uh, to think about which kind of education system supports these new work jobs. Uh, yeah. As these are, this is a new, entirely new piece of cake. So who's training the people that that can work a multidisciplinary team. The world of education is not ready for it. So how how do you train, grow? Where do you go study for this? Uh, what do you do? How do you how do you develop into a multidisciplinary um, skilled yeah. person? Well, it, it, it's 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 funny. That how you do you mentioned... combine? 
right? The kind of business knowledge with uh, design or mm. interaction design with physical design. So you go, mm. uh, education is very uh, one way and uh, the world out there is not one way. So that's what I don't understand. Yeah, that's what well, we try to do different. What do you, how do you see that? I, I, you know, I can talk about this for hours, but, <laughs> but um, I think that the status of uh, the architect has changed massively through times. Uh, I mean, you're Italian like me, you know, that back in the days, uh, the architect was more of a generalist. We had engineering and maths incorporated within our training. Um, I think that this has been lacking massively uh, since a few years and we are pushed more and more to become uh, specialists. So uh, the person that can uh, draw details will be assigned to that task and the person that is good at competition will be assigned to more the creative part yeah. and so on. So I think that yeah, also... Fact, uh... Yeah, this is also how we've been approaching the, the kind of multidisciplinary team set up is that we have specialists and generalists, yeah. but we do have both. So, mm -hmm. and we cannot do without both. Yeah. You cannot only have specialists, you cannot Indeed. only have generalists. Yeah, yeah. But the balance of that, that's also what we are trying to find out. But, and the difficult thing is uh, that the education system and we talk a lot i've been taking part to maybe a few different um uh, lectures or conversation within universities and within colleges and every time i i i i mention this i think everybody in the education system is also understanding that there is a different need but the education system has been for how i don't know for whatever we know as long as we know, it's been about specialism. You study law, medicine, you study one subject. And um, uh, once, you have, once you have to put, connect two dots, um, you are already like uh, an alien. Uh, imagine three dots, but the world out there, it's all dots connecting with each other. There's nothing that is disconnected. Um, I saw recently a, a very funny Netflix series called so what is all about connected is a um, I think it's called connected in fact. Yeah. Um, and there was an interesting episode in which they were looking at the sand in the Sah in the Sahara, so dust from the Sahara um, that kind of gets absorbed in the hair and then through the winds goes from the Sahara from a, a part of this desert it once was a lake so on the bottom side it has a different um yeah different particles basically it contained nutrients coming from the plants that were once a lake and then now is the sahara they become dust and they fly in the sky and they get transported to the amazon and that compensate it's really needed so for yeah. the amazon forest is and then you think about it wow you know so we don't understand still of what's happening out in the world if we see the Sahara is influencing the Amazon forest and you know how many things we don't understand about everything is connected we live with borders and passports and yeah. the same we do with education yeah. you, you don't connect so I think the future of education or companies will have to understand that interconnectivity between disciplines between science between biology between and otherwise how how can we cope to solve world challenges if we don't understand this size yeah. i don't know this, that's i, I think I, well i think that's my that's humble opinion the, is that's where the challenge is into building the right team right because no one will be able to know everything about everything um, but it's about being able to see the potential in everyone and try to combine it together to make things happen but i think it's also about a mindset um, very often when you come out of architecture graduation uh, you think okay i know everything and it and people are less curious there are uh, the mindset of it is to stay within the box of architecture and not really think 
more than that. So I think that also plays in it. And I think the mindset is something that can easily be changed in the education without reforming the whole uh, course uh, in itself. But it's about creating curiosity within students and in people and, and manage to, to work together uh, to achieve an innovative project in a way. So yeah. I think we also refer to that in the studio as um, the culture of innovation. So yeah. what is our innovation culture and how do we foster that? So for a long, for a long period, we've been working with this kind of uh, idea of knowledge management or setting up, uh, exchanging information. So to grow uh, and to foster a culture of innovation. But, and I think that this is an essential question that we have that we for which there is not a direct answer there's not a recipe that you that you say okay you have to do step one two three and then you got your innovation culture um but it is also a process that allows us to kind of rethink with each other how how that all unfolds um but yeah that's essential so and um and i i i find i find that is a a, a must a mass discuss topic in within the architectural industry. How do we foster an innovation culture that is not uh, driven by uh, the the market, that is not yeah. driven only by one entity or in one direction, but it, it really encapsulates, yeah, multiple perspectives into that, and and ultimately the uh, yeah that that for us is where does it create impact to yeah. yeah that's where we solve do we solve a real world problem do we solve or how by doing this what do we contribute to to that of big course. problem mm. maybe we don't solve it we don't it's not that we are going to solve climate change by making a, a building but can we contribute can yeah. we do a piece of of it to contribute to that big questions and th then maybe, maybe that's enough yeah indeed and and coming back to uh unsx um what are yeah. the next steps that you guys are gonna take um in terms of marketing in terms of launching um this is it is it actually is it a department or is it like a, a sister company or how does it is it... a department it is a department uh, uh, so in fact, it is um, a unit we call it, um, yeah. and uh, so we are um, uh, we, we are we kind of have uh, we are busy now with kind of making more um, uh, more PR of of the of the unit throughout mm -hmm. uh, September or October. So we just have basically um started to communicate about this and softly so mm -hmm. made a soft launch and we will we'll kind of do more uh, presentations throughout uh, in the next coming month mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah also showcasing the type of projects or activities that we've been doing and um, and especially uh, showing that what we do it is uh yeah not architecture so yeah. we've been doing a lot of other things than architecture from an architectural firm and that is complementary to that but is also strengthening the value of that and um so that's what we will be busy in the next couple of months we will take part to different um events talks uh we will blog we will mm -hmm. uh be on the social on social media so i think yeah. there's gonna be a whole all full of us uh set set around uh around the globe uh and um we will just talk about this um especially talking about experience design um yeah. i think experience design is a, a key way a key definition of what we how we see this um this different way of multidisciplinary design mm -hmm. and how to describe that in a better way than by experience design so in in sense uh, tra the traditional uh, built environment world is 
divided in discipline design. So I design landscape, architecture, mm. uh, bridges, engineer. And then we think, well, you know, that's one, um, pro, one create the same, um, one create, maybe can create innovation. Of course, there is always innovation in that, but uh, w- our approach is to try to do it in a different way. And we talk about experience design, where I ex- design the experience of working. So, and if I'm rethinking about how I work, then I might need to rethink about um, the space, but also the product and the digital technology that comes with it. So uh, I need to put more expertise together to design that experience. And that's where you need a multidisciplinary team to work with. So Mm -hmm. it's not space design, it's not digital design, it's not product design, it is experience design and that's why uns experience is kind of working at the cross link of these activities um i think this is really the essence of the name or how we approach it um and then that explains it also quite uh quite uh quite clearly for me uh and uh, the practice of doing this is really much more fun uh because you can uh, appreciate uh, designing things sometimes without knowing too much of it. And that's what makes you uh, uh, also do, say, um, things that are sometimes a bit too um, simplistic. But on the other hand, uh, you maybe come up with really fun ideas. Uh, yeah. Like, let's redesign a white paint. Uh, and then it comes yeah. up with coolest white. So, or, which is sounds very simple, but when you really dig in deep into it, then it comes, wow, yeah. that's actually a great idea. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That kind of approach, as, as yeah, it's uh, it requires that you don't know everything of everything. Because yeah. if you are know everything of everything and you're too much of a specialist, then uh, you always find the things that don't work. Oh yeah, yeah, if you do that, then there is a fire rating system called uh, DIN sixty five seven hundred that doesn't allow you to burn <laughs> things. I don't know. It becomes so complicated that yeah. uh, that you don't approach it with uh, uh, with uh, the simplicity of of of, uh, of a simple discourse. And sometimes we need that uh, yeah. to create innovation. Yeah, and to have someone that takes a step back and is able to see the problem in a different in a different way or from a different experience. Yeah, yeah. We often uh, uh, talk about reframing. So how can we yeah. reframe? that so we analyze what the problems are or really what are we trying to solve to Mm -hmm. then uh, reframe the starting point to come to a different conclusion Mm -hmm. Uh, and that is yeah it's it's a lot geared up also with the i believe that a lot of the education system is preparing us as uh, engineers architects or designer to be solution oriented Mm -hmm. so uh, in, instead, we should be oriented towards asking what are the problems, and mm. we don't ask that enough. So we are all very good in saying, "Yeah, I have a solution for for this. You take that and put this one and put two and solve." Uh, but did we ask the right question? Are we solving the right problem? Uh, there should be kind of a, yeah, in problem engineering degree. So I'm in, I'm an engineer of problems. You know, I, yeah. I, I engineer what are the problems, not what are the solutions. Um, and that's also something we are trying to kind of um, to get better at and asking yeah. the right questions. Yeah. Well, it's uh, been great to know more about UN- UNSX. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to see what what how you're gonna uh, bring it onto the market and what projects you're gonna get from it. Uh, I'm also really curious to see if you're gonna work in in collaboration really with with your internal UN Studio team or if it's going to be a completely independent uh, project as well. Do you have any visibility on that already? Or Yeah, I think it will be, I mean, it is already uh, both. So yeah. we do collaborate and we do play um, independently from other teams. And so that's also the, the nature of uh, effect of, UN Studio in general, UN Studio is standing for United Network Studio. So it always has been about the network okay. uh, and uh, that capability of working with within a network um, 
that's also the genetic of the DNA of you and studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's where the two letters stand from. Um, uh, so we will, we, will be, we will be doing both. So collaborate inside, outside, yeah. both mixing. Uh, I think that's the fun part of it. Okay. There's, there's not yet a, a fixed recipe that works mm-hmm. for everything. Um, yeah. So that's where we are. I foresee that we will still pivot, we will still change, we will still morph um, into something new and better and uh, maybe completely different. Um, in a few years time so as yeah. we don't there's a lot of uncertainties right in the in the globe mm-hmm. so but do, do you think that uh, clients will be open-minded about the work that you're doing well so far we've so we have been working already with a, a number of clients in this format and that's also a reason why we are committed to this as we yeah. know that it it does work and it does uh, provide really good results. Uh, so we, s- it's not only an uh, ambition to mm-hmm. do that, but it's already a pretty concrete fact. Uh, yeah. And uh, so that's yeah, quite quite solid already in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Thank you so much for coming and presenting uh, the UNSX um, experience. It's been my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah i'm looking forward to know more is there um any any ways that people can uh have a look at unsx yet uh, on your website well, or? we have uh, on the website there is a um a part of the website that is dedicated to it so okay. uh it's within the un studio uh web page um yeah. So there are some blogs, some articles, some projects we've been doing. There's a bit of a description. And uh, yeah, furthermore, we will just talk more about it, blog more about uh, following you in studio um, yeah. in the different um, kind of social media formats from LinkedIn to Instagram to the website. Okay. Uh, I think there will be more, more about it in the coming months. Yeah, very exciting. Um, I'm really looking forward to see uh, to see all of it. So uh, if people are listening, uh, yeah, definitely tune in and and keep updated with UN Studio. Thank you so much, Filippo, for uh, coming on. My pleasure. And uh, uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye.